Welcome to video one in this special video series where you're gonna look over my shoulder and watch me wholesale a house step-by-step step, virtually or remotely in Maryland. Now you're gonna look over my shoulder and see firsthand the entire process from start to finish. All of that and more coming up. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's Virtual Flipper Kit with everything you need to flip houses without seeing them in person. Download it now at virtualflipperkit.com. If you're new here to the channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippingMastery.com, and this channel is all about ways to help you make money wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. One of my most popular video series here on my channel is a three-part video series where I showed step-by-step -step how I virtually wholesaled an on-market deal in Indianapolis for $21,000 from start to finish. What's so great about that video series is you get to look over my shoulder and see the entire process unfold from finding the deal, finding a buyer, and closing on the transaction. Now, if you haven't seen that video series, I'll put the playlist link in the description for you. And since that deal in Indy was an on-market deal, meaning it was listed for sale with an agent, I thought it would be fun to do a similar video series with an off-market deal. So if you're a hands-on type of learner like me, you're gonna love this video series where you're gonna watch me virtually wholesale a house in Northeast Maryland in a rural town called Rising Sun. Now, when I say virtually, what I mean by that is remotely. I live in Arizona and this deal is in Maryland, so I haven't actually seen this property in person, but I'm gonna to attempt to wholesale it in a remote market across the country without ever physically seeing it. That's what I love about wholesaling. And as of right now, we have the contract with the seller. And so on this video, I'm gonna show you the first four steps to wholesaling a house. How we found the lead, how we contacted the seller, how we analyzed the deal, and how we secured the contract with the seller. And of course, I'll be teaching and explaining everything so you'll see with a real live deal. You're also gonna get an inside look at my deal management system, Flipster, which as you'll see is invaluable. I can't imagine doing this business without Flipster. If you've never heard of Flipster, it's a cloud-based, all-inclusive house flipping platform that has tools to help you organize, streamline, and automate all of the steps to finding and flipping deals. Now to check it out and see it in action, just go to getflipster.com. And be sure to stay tuned for part two on a future video where I'm gonna show you how I find a cash buyer and structure the wholesale. And the most important thing is video part three, closing and getting paid. All right, are you ready? Let's go. So first, let's talk about step one, how we found this deal. Inside Flipster, there are multiple lead generation tools. A lead is referring to someone who owns a property and is facing some kind of hardship, such as pre-foreclosure, probate, or divorce, and they are motivated to sell their property at a discount to alleviate the hardship and receive money for the property. This particular deal in Maryland came from a bankruptcy lead. So inside Flipster, you have everything you need to start a new deal and take it all the way through the wholesaling process. Now we call this the deal workflow. So step one is to find the lead. You can see we have the owner info and all of the details about the lead. Step two is to contact the seller. Flipster automatically provides phone and email for a lot of the leads, but if it doesn't, it also comes with a skip tracing service to look up owner's contact information. Now there are also several other tools to contact sellers, such as text blasting, ringless voicemail, and cold calling. Now on this deal, we sent a series of emails that comes as templates inside Flipster, and this motivated seller responded that they were interested in selling. And since we're doing this deal virtually, we set up a Zoom call to discuss the property with the sellers. Now using my seller scripts, we found out that the mom had recently passed away and the dad decided to deed the property to the son and his wife as an inheritance. And now the son and wife are looking to sell the property because they want the cash, not the house. This is the perfect situation to pick up a distressed property from a motivated seller. By the way, if you'd like my script so that you know exactly what to say when talking to motivated sellers, I'll give you mine for free. Just leave a comment and say, Jerry, you are a flipping genius. Give me those seller scripts and I'll give you the download link. The next step is analyzing the deal to determine the offer price, you know, crunch the numbers. So inside Flipster, the first thing we need to find out is the after repair value or the ARV. This is the price it will sell for once it's fixed up. Now, in order to determine the ARV, we have to look at recent comparable sales of similar homes in the area. Called comps, Flipster comes with a built-in comping tool. In a few minutes, I'm able to handpick the most relevant comps that are similar to my deal. 
Now to make sure it's a good comp, I can look at each one for further info. As I select the best comps for my deal, Flipster automatically updates my ARV for me. On this deal, the ARV is 230,000. Next, I click Run Deal Analyzer, and it puts all of the numbers together for me. Now I'm gonna put down a $25,000 wholesale fee, which means if I get this deal for 100,000 and wholesale it to a cash buyer for 125,000, then that fix and flip investor can spend 36,000 on the rehab, and if he resells it for 230,000, after closing costs and carrying costs, he'll make a 35,000 or so profit. And the way I know that it needs 36,000 in repairs is by using the rehab estimator tool inside Flipster, which has built-in pricing for every item of the rehab. And now that I have all the numbers together, it's time for step four, which is to make an offer and execute a contract with the seller. Since we wanted to settle at 100,000 on this deal, over the phone we offered a little less, 98,000 to be precise, and the seller didn't even counter and just accepted our offer. So using the digital purchase and sale agreement that also comes standard in Flipster, and it only takes a minute to fill out, we emailed it to the sellers who electronically signed it on the spot. So let's talk about the terms on the contract. We put that we would buy the property for all cash and as is, so the sellers don't have to do any work to the home. We put a 30 day closing with a 10 day inspection and a $1,200 earnest money due at the end of the inspection. Now the inspection and earnest money are really important, so let me take a minute and explain. A 10 day inspection contingency means that I have an entire 10 days to do my due diligence, and if for any reason I find out during those 10 days that the deal doesn't work, then I can terminate the contract or renegotiate. It doesn't mean I have to hire and perform a professional inspection. It just means I have 10 days if I wanna do an inspection. In reality, I'm gonna use the 10 day window, which just started today, to find and secure my cash buyer, so stay tuned for part two of this video series. The earnest money of $1,200 is my good faith deposit that is applied towards the purchase. This lets the seller know that I'm serious about buying the property. Now, if I don't perform on the contract after all contingencies are removed, then the seller gets to keep my earnest money. The earnest money is to be held by the title company who's doing the closing, which I'll discuss in a minute, so keep watching. Normally for off-market deals, I only pay like 10 to $100 in earnest money, but on this deal, we offered $1,200 in earnest money with the stipulation that it's not actually due until after the 10-day inspection is over. Now, since I'm wholesaling this deal, that means if I can't find a buyer during the 10-day inspection window and I need to terminate the contract, I never actually had to pay the earnest money. Now, if you think that's genius, leave a comment and say, Jerry, you are a flipping genius. Once officially under contract, it's time to open escrow. And since the dad gave the property to the son and his wife, I called the same title company who did the deed transfer to make sure it was transferred already and there weren't any issues and to discuss using them to open escrow and handle the closing transaction with me. I figured it would be easiest to use the same title company since they are familiar with the property. Now I recorded that call with the title agent. Take a listen. Okay, so that deed, the dad actually just transferred title to Kelly and David. Okay, so it is in their name now. It is, yes. It okay. just came back from recording, yeah. Great, okay. Now we did not do a title search when we did the deed. So we would still need to get a title search, but yes, by all means, you know, we had done the, the work on it previously. Yeah, I want to make sure we have a warranty deed, free and clear title. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and and um, there's no liens, there's no mortgage or anything? That is correct. Okay, so it should be pretty clean deal at this point. Yep. All right, well, we've got a few days of, of uh, due diligence, so we're going to work through that, and then we'll need to get over the contract and earnest money to you. Very good, and do you guys do assignments? Are you comfortable doing assignments? Assignments of contracts? Yeah, assignment of contracts. We can. There would need to be an assignment, obviously, yeah. signed by whoever it would be, and then yep. the amount would need to be, yes, that's fine. We can okay. take care of that. Okay, well, that's good. So then let me, uh, give me a couple days, but I'll get over the contract and sure. earnest money, and we've got a closing on our contract for the um, end of the month, like the 30th. Okay which should give plenty of time to be ready. That should be fine. I'm assuming you're gonna be paying cash for it then? Yeah. Okay, all right, sounds good. Okay, thanks Holly, talk to you soon. You're very welcome. Okay. 
So the good news is the property was effectively transferred to the son and wife, which is who we have an executed contract with, so that's good. And the title company said that they are comfortable doing assignments. This is important to find out when wholesaling. Always make sure to use a wholesaler-friendly title company to make sure you have a smooth transaction. And I did a video which explains why it's so important and how to find a wholesaler-friendly title company. I'll put the link to that in the description below and you can watch it later. So I sent the executed purchase and sale agreement to the title company and now it's time to find a cash buyer. Keep in mind, I don't know any cash buyers in Rising Sun, Maryland. Um, I've never done a deal there. I've never been there. I had to look it up on a map. So stay tuned for part two in this video series where I'm gonna show you exactly how I find and secure a cash buyer remotely while sitting here in my home office in Arizona. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping, and I'll see you on the next video.